Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Luca, and today we will uh, see how we can use DistroBox to develop on these new wave of uh, immutable and atomic distributions, in particular on Eon. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Chaingard, uh, open source lover, and uh, yeah, those are my contacts if uh, someone needs. Uh, so today we will first talk of what is and it, this box and what is not, and um, some basic use cases for the uh, development and what not. So, actually, what is this box? Uh, so this box is a POSIX uh, script, uh, a set of POSIX scripts that wrap a container manager. Um, it is inspired by um, containers toolbox, uh, which is formerly known as Fedora toolbox, and OpenSUSE uh, MicroS toolbox. Um, it uh, expands on the idea of being a you know toolbox for you know uh, debugging an emergency to um, actually create complete user lens for for use. Uh, it's, um, it wraps either Podman, it can wrap Docker or Lillipod. Uh, Lillipod is another uh, container manager that I, I actually wrote, which is like a super small subset of what uh, Podman does, but its aim is to be, you know, the minimum requirements for DistroBox to work uh, in as less uh, dependency as possible. Um, yeah, the idea is to streamline and uh, abstract as much as possible from the original container manager so that you can concentrate on just asking for, you know, a user land that you need. Um, and so that the container is actually super high integrated with the host instead of being an isolation. We will talk more about this later. Um, why not a ch root? Uh, actually, it's because this way we can leverage all the OCI landscape of images, which is huge. Um, the aim is to be easy to use. So um, we will see that it has lots of uh, subcomments and flags, but the idea is that the faults are sane and it's easy to use without flags, so that you can just distro box do stuff, and it should work, but it can give you the power of customizing it as, as you need and be actually useful. So the uh, host integration goes for Wayland and X, so you can launch um, graphical application from it, full audio integration, SSH, DBus, uh, removable devices, uh, systemd, the user session of systemd, uh, but uh, there are also extra features, like we can create actual uh, system containers with DistroBox, um, even if we are not uh, using LXC or Incus, uh, we can create like a systemd container using Podman, Docker, or Lillipod. It's, uh, it is possible to actually have a manifest so that you can do your environments declaratively with DistroBox. Uh, it has comments to export uh, binaries and applications so that the integration with the host is even more seamless. <clears throat> so what it is, uh, it's aimed at rootless setups. It, it was born like this uh, when I was working for a company and they gave me a, you know, a company laptop that didn't have sudo and I need to work. And um, so I started um, I um, ideating this. Uh, it's good for software compatibility. Uh, we will see that there is a pretty big um, compatibility image list. Uh, it goes all the way back to like CentOS 7, uh, all the way now to Tumbleweed, Arch, Fedora. So it's a quite wide um, and diverse compatibility. It's good for separation of environments. Um, it's not isolating the environments, but it's good if you, you know, need um, sort of like virtual environments, but for whole user lens instead. 
and it's shipped by default by mo almost all uh, atomic and immutable distributions by Aeon. Uh, SteamOS also ships it by default. The Ubu and Badseed folks ship it, uh, Vanilla OS, and for Fedora, it's available in the repos. Uh, what is not? It's not a security tool. This is not a sandboxing tool for those who use the like, proper Podman Docker, for GUI, use flat packs uh, because they are actually sandboxing and isolating stuff. This is not. Uh, it's not an insecure thing. Like in rootless setups, um, the container cannot do anything that you cannot already do. So it's not like there are privileges escalation or something. You're not more safe. You're not less safe. It's same. Uh, but for rootful setups, so if you use Docker, for example, or Podman with uh, sudo, Remember that the root in the container is the actual root also in the host, so it can mess things up. Now, let's talk about Eon. Uh, Eon is the uh, immutable atomic distribution of, based on uh, Tumbleweed and MicroOS. Um, it's really nice. I like it it's, uh, because it's more like an appliance um, target, so it tries to be more like Chrome OS. Uh, fire and forget. It very much focuses on the out-of-the-box experience. It's minimal and it's highly focused on flatpak and containers, obviously. So the philosophy of Eon is leave the base system clean and alone. <laughs> CLI apps should be in a container. GUI apps should be in a flatpak. They come from FlatHub, so. The whole community works on them, and um, yeah, there is this good separation of concerns. So this is the um, design of uh, Aeon. So you have this base OS based on micro OS with GNOME without any apps because everything is added as flat packs by default. Uh, you can still use classic, classic RPMs for very edge cases. Not, not advised, uh, but the, the talk after me will go much more deeper down on Aeon. Uh, graphical application from Flatpaks, and we have terminal application with Distrobox, but uh, for apps that don't actually have a Flatpak or the Flatpak is not the best solution for those apps, there is still Distrobox export that we will explore in a bit. Uh, basically lets you have GUI apps highly integrated with your environment, even though they are running in a container. So we will concentrate on this part of the design today. So all good and dandy, you have your immutable distribution, super reliable, super rolling and go on. But I need to work. I need to install stuff. I need SDKs. Uh, I need terminal application, GUI applications. So with Distrobox, you can, we can have mutable environments. We can have multiple environments, so diverse uh, distributions or diverse you know, snapshots. Maybe you want uh, to test something on Tumbleweed of a snapshot of a couple of weeks ago, I don't know. Stuff like this. And you can highly customize these environments. So, as I was saying, nice for SDKs, libraries, debuggers, editors, encapsulate the environment so you can have multiple versions parallelly. So, for example, you want some stuff from Wolfie, or you want some stuff from Tumbleweed, you can just pop up in the terminal and install them if, as if it was not an immutable distribution. What are the limitations and compatibility of Distrobox? We need a POSIX compliant shell. It's uh, mostly that, and we need a uh, support to package manager. That's not a big problem. We have uh, support for, I think, everything under the sun, more or less. Um, why we need a package manager? It is needed because to provide a properly integrated container, we, we can 
can't rely only on those basic images of like, I don't know, 20 megabytes from Alpine. Uh, we need more stuff, so, but you, there is a set of uh, images that are more suited for those. There, are, uh, there is an um, official Tumbleweed DistroBox image. There is the um, Toolbox Images project, which is a community effort to create toolboxes that are compatible also with Fedora Toolbox. They are compatible also with DistroBox uh, even more. So you have this, you know, cheesy screenshot with all the various <laughs> distributions. You can create your own images with Dockerfile. They are, you know, normal containers, so you can create your own image and use that, or you can create assembly um, assembly um, manifests. They are INI simple manifest, very simple, you know, key value stuff. This you can declare multiple boxes with um, you know packages, commands to run at the init and so on, so that you can actually have a pre-made um, environment. I th those are actually my personal. Uh, boxes from my dot files. So when I have to set up a new machine, I just clone my dot files, distro box assemble, and I wait, and they are good to go for uh, for development. You can, uh, you know, uh, already mix and match. Uh, for example, I use Wolfie for the development, but not all packages and tools that I need are in Wolfie. So I have uh, these. Tumbleweed distro box with some other stuff that is absent still, and I can export those. So from Wolfie, I can transparently use stuff from the um, Tumbleweed containers and so on. So it's a quite seamless integration. And uh, yeah, so why you will want maybe different environments? Uh, sometimes you go and find some project where the build instructions are only for Ubuntu 20.04. I don't know, it happens. Or the binary is only released uh, for a specific distribution. Um, one of examples uh, is for, for example, for DaVinci uh, Resolve, which uh, I think it's released only on uh, Red Hat or CentOS. So you can create um, dedicated container and transparently use it, and then use this robot export. Uh, what it does, it actually exports back to the host, either a container or an app, and so for, from the host itself, for you it's a regular binary, you just execute it, but under the hood, it goes through containers to do all this uh, fancy stuff. Also, we are in the era of AI, so GPU integration is very important. Um, it's also nice that you can encapsulate various, you know, uh, dependencies for the development. Out of the box, Intel AMD for the open source drivers are already supported. Uh, you can mix and match Mesa and uh, OpenGL Vulkan versions. So if you, for example, need something newer from Arch, or you, you can do that. Uh, Rockham support is also possible. Uh, you don't have to install it on the host. You can install them only on the guest, on the container. Uh, for NVIDIA, you need to have it on the host. And there is a seamless integration so that reuses the libraries from the host back in the container, so you don't have to actually install, again, the, the um, drivers also in the container, and they're kept in sync, so when you update your drivers on the host, in the next start of the containers, they are automatically remounted, so they are always fresh. You don't have to download another runtime or whatever. And yeah, so what you can use it for, for example, I use it for Libvirt, uh, I need VMs on my computer, so uh, instead of as installing with transactional update, 
or RPM or S3 if you're on Fedora, installing like 100 packages, which pretty much defies the purpose of having these neatly uh, vetted image-based system, you can slap it in a container. <laughs> this is actually a uh, system container. As you can see, we have an init. This means this container has actually systemd inside. Um, it has some flags for the unsharing, install all the, the stuff. And so when all the process is finished, you get in your um, upgrade a neat little uh, tumbleweed uh, icon, icon. So that one will open your a terminal with uh, tumbleweed already launched inside. Or you will also have your virtual virt manager icon. So this is an example of uh, an app GUI application export. So you, you have your application seamlessly integrated in the host. It's a regular application. What it does in, instead is launching inside the container. And then you can have your VMs normally. When you're done, you can just destroy the container. All is lost. You can remove everything transparently. For work, I, I also cannot just use Podman. I actually need Docker, so we can run Docker inside Podman. This way, this uh, enables to, to run uh, another init full container with systemd, with inside Docker, and then export it back to the host, so you can transparently use Docker without having to uh, install all, all this stuff manually on the, on the host. For development purposes, uh, I use Vim, by the way. And um, this is pretty much uh, seamless. You just enter the container and, and run your stuff. Uh, you can automatically uh, set up dot .files, system dependencies from the assembly file. Um, I think this is like the easiest type of uh, integration development with, with, with DistroBox. But most people use VS Code. <laughs> and uh, for that, we can either use the native Flatpak. And uh, I've created in, the, 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 in, in my uh, repo, there is a, a little Podman host utility uh, that lets you use the host Podman from the Flatpak. And it wraps it so that it treats distro boxes uh, in, in a special manner so that you, it doesn't enter as root. It carries on your environment and stuff like that. So this way, you can actually use a distro box as a complete environment also from VS Code. Alternatively, you can just slap VS Code inside the container and export it. It's the same. Uh, there, there is an article on how to integrate it. It's, uh, relatively simple. What's on the roadmap? Uh, I want to improve documentation. I have plenty of documentation, but it's not that well organized from what I see, because people are always asking the same questions, so probably not that good. Uh, I want to improve the code re readability. There is a technical choice in using POSIX shell, which is not the prettiest language, so I want to make an effort to keep it as clean and readable as possible so that I can still use it and manage it without having external dependency or, you know, runtime libraries and stuff like that. This way, it's way easier. I want to improve package manager handling. Uh, more than once, someone is uh, lamenting that if you use DNF on Tumbleweed, this box doesn't work. And uh, see, yeah, I need to improve that because uh, when I see DNF, I assume Fedora. So uh, it's, uh, it's, that's the problem. And with the improving in the code layout and readability, I want also to introduce more container manager. So you can use Incas and Spawn or plain BWRAP or micro VMs. So you can match and mix and experiment and improve tests. Uh, right now, I have um, an exhaustive CI, but it's a little bit too much. Like, it's actually running every single <laughs> uh, image. 
uh, are, um, maybe we can optimize this stuff so we can test different stuff on different distros. And yeah, so that was it. And I want to do some special thanks to the Eon team, Vanilla OS team, the Ublue team, and all the 150 something contributors that uh, contributed to DistroBox in these uh, two years. Uh, DistroBox is on GitHub, uh, 89 Luca 89 DistroBox. We have a Matrix channel, a Discord channel. We used to have a, two, uh, a Telegram channel, but uh, Telegram didn't like my account. So there isn't, there isn't one anymore. So yeah, that was Distrobox, and thank you. Uh, if there are questions, I'm open to questions. All good? All good. Thank you very much. <laughs>